Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the basic segment routing configuration with OSPF Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. Let's talk about the topology first. R1, R3, and R4 are PE routers, that is provider edge, and R2 is just a straight provider router, which means it's not connected to any customer device. And so with that, CE1, 2, and 3 are customer edge devices. They're all within the same layer 3 VPN. And what we want to do is we want to set up segment routing to provide communication and connectivity between each of those customer sites with using segment routing. And so criteria in the example, we want to configure segment routing with OSPF. User 1 needs to be able to communicate with Server 1 and Server 2. And you can see that Server 1 is at the CE2 site and the server two is at the CE3 site. And we're not gonna be doing traffic engineering. This is just the basic configuration for segment routing. So that means the traffic will be following the shortest path. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is the CLI. We have R1, R2, R3, R4, and then the VR device. Now the VR device is going to house the CE devices as virtual routers. And so keep in mind, we will be sending traffic from this device, but it'll be from the virtual routers that are named CE1, 2, and 3, and things like that. So let's go ahead and start with R1. Let's jump into configuration mode. Let's jump into protocols, and we can see here that we have some configuration. We have BGP and OSPF configured, but we need to configure MPLS. And I'm just gonna set that to interface all for the sake of time. And then we need to configure OSPF with segment routing. Do source packet routing, specify the SRGB. Now that stands for source routing global block. Specify a start label of 5,000 and an index range of 1,000. And what that does, that means that we are going to be starting or handing out any labels at 5,000 and then do that for 1,000 labels. So that means the label range is going to be 5,000 to 5,999. And then we need to set the source packet routing node segment index. And so this is what we're going to set for R1 for the node segment segment ID. We're gonna set that to one. So that means that R1 is going to get a node segment ID of 5001 since that is within that range we set. And so you can see the configuration here. We can see that we have MPLS configured properly and then OSPF with source packet routing configured properly. And then let's look at the interfaces. We need to make sure that any interfaces that are forward facing interfaces have family MPLS configured. That's going to be Gigi zero and Gigi one for this router. Let's commit the configuration and then let's jump to R2. Now R2 is pre-configured for the sake of time. So all we need to do is do some source routing configuration under OSPF. The interfaces are configured, MPLS protocols configured, and the source packet routing SRGB start label and index range is already configured. Let's go ahead and configure the node segment ID. And this is gonna be two, so that means we're gonna give this router an node segment ID of 5002. And let's commit the configuration. And we're gonna do the same thing with R3 as well. That's gonna be three that we're giving it for a label, and that's gonna be 5003 is what it'll actually receive. And then R4, the same thing. And we're going to get four, which of course is going to give it 5,004. Okay, so let's jump to the VR device and attempt to communicate between devices. And so this is going to be server one, which is connected to CE2. We're going to be using the CE1 routing instance, and we can see we have communication. That's great. And this is going to be server two connected to the CE3 device, and we have communication. So user one is able to ping server one and server two. That's perfect. That means that things are working correct. Now let's go ahead and jump back to R1 and let's look at some segment routing information just to verify everything is working as expected. So first let's look at the route table, inet.3. Helps if I specify the table parameter as well. Okay, so you can see we have some labeled OSPF routes here. And we can see that there is three of them. 192.168.100.2 is R2. Dot three is R3 and dot four is R4. Notice how the labeled OSPF routes for R2 and R3 do not show any label being pushed, whereas R4 shows that there's a label of 5004 being pushed. Recall we assigned the index label value or node segment ID of four, which gives R4 5004, 
So that makes sense that we're pushing 5004 to reach R4, and we do have two different paths from R1 to reach R4, but why would R2 and R3 not have any labels pushed? And the reason behind that is we are using penultimate hot popping, which is the default, and so we're not pushing any labels there because R1 would just pop the label and send the traffic natively to R2 or R3. So let's go ahead and look at R4. Look at the MPLS route table. And you might question why we don't see 5004 here. That's because R4 is not expecting to receive anything with the label 5004. Because since we're doing penultimate hot popping, any device, that be R2 or R3, should pop that 5004 label before it reaches R4. So let's go ahead and look at R3, look at the MPLS table here, and we can see that 5004 is being popped at R3. So let's go ahead and go back to R1. Let's look at the routes for the end devices. And we can see here in the CE1.inet.0 table that we have this route, and recall this route is for server one, so that's connected to CE2, which is connected to R3. So you might think, well, we should just be sending that traffic to R3 with no label, correct? Well, that's not actually correct. Even though we are using penultimate hot popping, we still need to put a VPN label on it or the label for the VPN. Because if we jump to R3 and look at the MPLS table, we can see that the 20 label is a VPN route label. And so that's why it's there. And we can see that R3 would then pop it and then send it to the CE2 device. So let's go back to R1 and look at the server two route. Helps if I use the whole command here. Okay, and we can see here that, okay, we have some additional labels being pushed. There's two paths to go through. And we can see here that we're pushing 49 label and then the label 5004. The 5004 is the label for R4, the node segment label. And then the 49 is going to be that VPN label. And so we're pushing the 49 label, then we're putting the 5004 label on top. And you can see that with the top output there. And so let's look at the MPLS table here and we can see that 5004, we're gonna be popping that. Okay, so it's gonna to get to R3 or R2 and then the label will be popped. Nothing's being swapped. And then we get to R4, we can see that there's a VPN label of 49 that will be popped. All right, so the last thing I want to show is let's look at the OSPF database because recall that the label information is stored in the OSPF database, which is gonna be the same on any device. So we could do this on an R1, two, three, or four, and we're gonna see the same information. So first let's look at the OSPF database command. And you can see here, there's, it's not as easy. If you're using ISIS, it's a little easier to look at the labels. But here, it's going to be in the opaque area LSAs. So let's look at those closer. You need to specify the opaque area. I was thinking I need to specify type first, but that's not the case here. And then let's go ahead and specify the LSA ID. And we can say 192.168.100.1, which is going to be R1. And specify the detail command. Sorry, I meant the advertising router, not the LSA ID. Okay, so here we can see this is going to be R1. And we can see a few different things. And I'll go ahead and scroll up here. And we can see here that the opaque area LSA with the ID of 4.0.0.0. We can see here that we have the SID label range. Uh, the range size is 1,000. We see 5,000, which is the start label. And if we scroll down, we can also see other information about these individual SID IDs, uh, SID adjacency, and things like that. And we could repeat this command for the other routers in the network to find this information as well. So this brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure segment routing with OSPF. And then we also demonstrated how to verify segment routing with OSPF. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.